According to Google, there's 287 days till Halloween as of today when I'm filming. So I say we just fill up those 287 days with as much horror as we can. Hi everybody, welcome back to A Well Read Nerd. I'm Amber. As you can tell by the title, I'm going to be going over one of my favorite genres today, which is horror. I love horror. I love horror movies. I love horror novels. I love all of it. So this was actually a very hard like video to make because when I sat down to figure out what books I wanted to talk about in the upcoming year, I ended up with 93 titles. That's a lot of books. I'm not going to read all of them. There's no way I could possibly read all of them. But yeah. So instead, I have my Word document open in front of me, and I'm just going to go through and I am going to read, I'm going to tell you about the highlights of my frankly ridiculous TBR I created in my head the other night. I blame lack of sleep. It's the only possible solution. Now, and like I said, I just love horror like so much that everything sounded amazing. So I'm going to break this video down into two parts. I'll put um, timestamps down below now that I know how to do that. I'm going to start with the ones that have already been released that I think will be really good. Uh, they've gotten really good reviews so far and things like that. And then I'm going to go into stuff that's coming out later in this year. Now also in order to tamp down on my frankly ridiculous list, I have elected to only talk about female authors. Nothing against male authors. Mm -hmm. Huge Stephen King fan. Uh, my main reason for this is, one, there are a lot of really great offerings coming from female authors this yeah, upcoming year in the horror genre. And two, I kind of feel like women are often overlooked in the genre. Uh, women are powerhouses of fantasy, historical drama, romance, naturally, things like that. But I feel like in the horror genre, everybody kind of goes towards the male authors and they kind of overlook the gems that are out there by female authors. That's changing in recent years. But yeah, I always like to showcase them. There are, of course, uh, women of color on here as well because a lot of times they frankly just tell more fascinating stories. It's new to me. I'm a white chick, so uh, it, like it's always amazing and something new and a new experience. But yeah, so I am going to start here with the releases that have already come out in January or are coming out in the next like week or so that have uh, already gotten reviews and stuff like that. And I'm going to uh, tell you what I think of them. All right, first we have one that has been making its rounds on Instagram because it came out on January 4th, and that is Reckless Girls by Rachel Hawkins. Um, it's basically the story of uh, six people on a mysterious island. There's another interloper. The six people don't really know each other. They're like three groups of two that all just happen to be there uh, in the mysterious circumstances and things surrounding the island. Uh, it's gotten very good reviews. It currently has a four star on Goodreads. I am going to add it to what I've started calling my library pile, which is my library started getting more ebooks. Um, so I'm probably going to rent this and read it, not buy an actual physical copy. That is simply because of the nature of the story. I don't think, for me, it's going to have rereadability. Some horror mo books you can, and horror movies, you can just indulge in over and over and over again and get a new experience out of it every single time. I feel like, given the reviews for this one, this one is going to be a, and I tried to avoid spoilers so it wouldn't ruin the twists and things, I think this is going to be a one-time enjoyment for me, not a multiple-time enjoyment. So it's going to go on my library list. All right, next we have A Flicker in the Dark by Stacy. Is it? It's Wilmingham. I almost said William said it's Wilmingham. Um, this came out on January 11th, which was, according to when I'm filming this, five days ago. So I've also seen a good chunk of reviews on it. It's also got a four-star review on Goodreads. 
And as a little snippet of the plot, it's basically about a psychologist, Chloe Davis, who lives in Baton Rouge, I think. I forgot to write down. She lives in Louisiana. I'm pretty sure it said Baton Rouge. Um, and she is the daughter of a serial killer, a person that was convicted of being a serial killer. And now, years later, she is experiencing another summer where there are murders happening in her city that are oddly reminiscent of her father's murders. And trying to basically figure out if this is him, if it's a copycat, what if it's something new, all of that. Now, I think this will be probably a Kindle read for me. It does have rereadability um, from the plot of it. Uh, I feel like there's a lot of uh, drama and psychological stuff in it that I will get uh, enjoyment out of through multiple reads. Uh, I say Kindle just because, as you can see behind me, my bookshelf is piling up quickly and I've started trying to move over to Kindle reads uh, for a lot of things just because I am going to have to build another bookshelf. I have an addiction. It's fine. Uh, it's manageable. I have the money to, with, to withstand it. Um, but yeah, that one does have uh, rereadability from what I've seen for me. And uh, it might eventually get moved over to me buying a physical copy. All right, another one that came out on January 11th is The Stars Are Not Bells by Hannah Lilith Asadi. Um... This is one of those, like, odd historical horrors. I say odd because, like, they either go really well or they don't go really well, depending on how well they mesh the historical with the horror elements. There also seems like there might be a supernatural element to this, but it's not really, like, can, it's not really definite, so there's that. Um, this is going to be another kindle read for me because i think those story elements could blend really well or not really well it just depends on the execution of the author it does have a four star review on um goodreads but because historical horror is such a niche like genre um i think uh, the people that like that are the ones reading it and reviewing it. I don't know about its wider appeal. So that one I'm going to just read on Kindle and see how it goes. It might be another one that eventually goes over to uh, me buying a physical copy if I really like it. All right, next we have the first of two categories that I've got here. We're still in January and things that have already come. Well, this one comes out in two days, but uh, preemptive copies that people send out for reviewers and stuff are already out. So there's reviews on it. It's called Mestiza Blood by V. Castro, and this is a collection of short stories written by a person of color. Specifically, she appears to self-identify as Chicana, which is a Mexican-American woman. Um, but I'm interested in this one because it seems, from the blurb and the reviews, to mix a lot of those elements of... Uh, traditional Mexican folklore that migrated to the United States, urban legends in the Chicano and Chicana populations of uh, the United States, all of those. And those are always very interesting because some of them are very localized. If you don't live in the area um, where the people grew up, you might, even with the internet, you might never have heard of those urban legends or those little folklore twists. Um, so that's always interesting, especially when something, when an author can take something that is personal f to their own experience in their own life and then turn it into a work of horror. I'm fascinated by that. Uh, and given from what I've read, there's a, only a minimum amount of La Llorona in it. it it's everybody's go-to Hispanic horror ghost story. Uh, I think mostly because it's the only one publishers have ever heard of. Uh, man, the publishing industry needs to diversify quick. Um, or it's going to die hardcore. Uh, but yeah, that one looks like a good collection of stories. And I love uh, short stories because a short story collection is one of those where you can pick up and read at your own pace. You can pick out the stories that are the most appealing to you 
and enjoy those ones. And a lot of times that does lead to a lot of rereadability because you will always find that one story that really resonates with you and you want to read again and again. That one I think I'm going to, that might be, in, I'm not going to be able to get that on the library alone. Um, so I think it's going to be another Kindle and then uh, probably transfer over to a hard copy later. All right, and the last one on the list, although a special mess, uh, special mention to uh, such a pretty smile, um, a lot of people really seem to enjoy that one. I just don't think I'm going to. So I will probably eventually read it at some point, but I'm not going to add that to my definite TBR for the year. Uh, but one that I am going to men that I am going to add, and I'm mentioning now, is Generation X. And this is an anthology. So it's a lot of authors. I think I counted 20. Um, all putting together their own stories into an anthology collection. I like anthologies. Again, um, if you don't like a part of it, you could always find something else to enjoy. And that's always great. Especially if you are not a huge horror fan or you don't know if you like horror I would definitely say pick up an anthology series give it a go I can almost guarantee pretty much everybody will find one story in that book they're gonna like but it's specifically an anthology about like monsters folk folklore uh, or folk fiction uh, paranormal things like that um, but it's specifically told through the perspectives of Gen Xers, a, aka like the generation before me. I was born a couple of years too late to be considered a Gen Xer, even though I was in, was I in junior high already before the 90s were out? I was in junior high already before the 90s were out, but I fall in like that cusp thing of like, I'm still considered a millennial. Um, but that like latchkey kid, like the eras when you could like disappear, um, cell phones were common enough for some people if you had a lot of money, but most people didn't. Uh, so, like, you were just running wild while your parents were at work. Um, that bygone era that, you know, your parents couldn't GPS track you. So, kids, if you're watching this, there was a time when your parents couldn't GPS track you. They just had to trust that you were at your friend's house. But, yeah. I think that would be a, a unique experience, especially from authors who are Gen Xers who are now in their 40s and 50s but remember that like pre-internet like era of uh ambiguity and mystery and mystery where like the world was connected but not really uh and I think that will be an interesting like lens to tell us tell stories through so I am probably gonna pick that one up like as an actual book um, but that's just because I'm feeling, uh, I would, I'm going to get a lot of rereadability out of it with those stories. And like I said, there's like 20 different, 20 or 26 different short stories in there. So that definitely lends to rereadability. All right. So next we're getting into February, the month of love and football. By the way, people, uh, this is your friendly reminder. Valentine's day is the day after the Super Bowl. Break up now. Because if not, your friends are all going to hate you. Uh, you're going to ruin both for them. We're going to get into some of my horror Valentine's reads. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> but first, we're going to go with The Book of Most Precious Substance by Sarah Gran. And this is going to be coming out on February 8th of this year. Um, it is a unique read in the fact that it follows Lily, a person with uh, a little bit of a tragic backstory, who is a book dealer. And she is on the hunt for a 17th century novel called The Book of the, the, Book of the Most Precious Substance. Uh, and... It is a book that deals with sex magic and being able to grant whatever you want to the person that possesses the book. So it takes her on an adventure dealing with those. There's naturally horror involved with this too, being uh, 
a dark book dealing with magic and power and powerful people. But I think it's a good Valentine's read. Like, if you're somebody who's not super into romance, but want something that, you know, makes you think of the holiday season. And what makes you think of the holiday season more than sex magic? Uh, yeah, I think it'd definitely be a good read if you're enjoying a nice singles Valentine's Day curl up with a nice, you know, glass of whiskey, you know, comfy blanket, uh, and just enjoy it. I think it would be a great read for that. And I think I'm actually going to get a physical copy of it because I think I have a lot of rereadability for it. Also, I, there are a few people in my life that I think would like it. Um, so it does have re-giftability too. Uh, ones I've gotten all of my enjoyment out of it, I'm sure they would also enjoy reading it. All right, next one's not really Valentine's. Like, that was really the only Valentine's one I had, but I wanted to sound epic. Um, but it's called... Dead Silence by S.A. Barnes. It's coming out on February 8th. I considered adding this to my sci-fi video that I did the other week. Um, I ended up like taking it out of there because it did sound more like a horror sort of novel and that's what really put it in my head of maybe creating a horror recommendations for the upcoming year. Um, but if you want to know what bare bones is of what it's about, uh, it's basically Ghost Ship, the movie, set in space. Um, I'm hoping the end of it is better than the movie Ghost Ship, because Ghost Ship starts off a high note, and then it goes face first into the toilet. Um... It's basically a salvage crew. They find this, like, mythical ship that disappeared. It's in space. Um, and, like, you know, all this weird stuff that happens. Um, I'm going to make that a Kindle read for this year. Uh, I think it, on a Kindle it would go super fast. You know, very enjoyable. You know, you could curl up underneath a blanket and, like, just, like, get into the mood of the isolation of space. But, yeah. That, I think that's a good, like, uh, genre-bending one. If you like sci-fi and horror, I say give Dead Silence a try. All right, next we have something that is a genre of horror that I really enjoy, but I don't know how many other people out there enjoy it, so if you do, comment down below, and that's folk horror. Folk horror is basically something that, f it's a horror novel that feels like somebody's telling you, like, an urban legend. Uh, it usually has a lot to do with, like, paganism, like, dark, gritty, like, small-town, rural things. Um, I like the genre when it's done well. Uh, so the next one is The Queen of the High Fields by Rhiannon A. Grist. It's coming out on February 8th. I think this one would be a good fit for well-done folk horror. Um, it deals with two friends, uh, their past, a mysterious island, mysterious power, splitting apart, one person accepting power over friendship, and then the other person coming back years later. I think that that could be a really good, like, mix of, uh, like, interpersonal drama and horror. So I'm going to add that to my Kindle um, watch list, and I'm going to give that one a try this year, too. You know, most of these are Kindles. Uh, the reason why I do so many Kindle things is because, or I've started doing so many Kindle things, is because I have the Kindle app on my phone. And when I take my breaks at work or my lunch at work, I can read a few pages. It's a lot harder to juggle a book and everything else and shove it in my locker and have that. I can, um, I can read on my app on my phone a whole lot easier. So... In some ways, I've started going over to that because it is a faster way of reading for me. Um, I tend to go through books a little bit faster because of that. Because I can, instead of having to grab the physical copy I, when I'm having my coffee in the morning, I can grab, I can read a few pages. When I'm eating dinner at night, uh, I can eat, read a few more pages. Like it, it's just an easier way for me to do that. So I've I've started going over that way a little bit more. Um, and I have the Kindle Unlimited plan, so, like, there's that, too. But, yeah, I would say if you're one of those people that always finds a hard time finding time to read, maybe give that a try of getting the app on your phone and seeing that that helps you. Because it's really helped me a lot. 
All right, next we have another like ghost story-esque thing. Uh, it's called Beneath the Stairs by Jennifer Fawcett. Uh, it comes out on February 22nd. Uh, it's a basically a ghost story with a haunted house and something that happens in the past. It leads to uh, one of the characters attempting suicide, drawing another character back to their hometown and that house and trying to unravel the mystery. Um, I'm iffy about this one. Like, uh, it sounds like it could be really good and I hope it's really good. Uh, I think it's going to be one of those ones where I wait a little bit and see what the reviews are and then go from there. All right, next we have The Bone Orchard by Sarah A. Mueller. It's coming out March 22nd. Now this is also another gen or I always say, well, I always say gender. I mean genre like but uh it's a mix of fantasy and horror which i think those two could play very well together when done well uh in this case it follows a necromancer who is indebted to the empire uh as the emperor is dying she is tasked with finding out which of his sons murdered him and who's going to become the new emperor and if she accomplishes this, if she accomplishes this, she gets her freedom. If she doesn't, then she remains in servitude. So I think it has a nice, a lot of really nice elements that can go both ways, especially with the necromancer. I really hope they play that up, because um, it it can be done well or not well. Uh, a case in point: the Bone Maker, uh, by who did that one? Uh, Sarah name escaping me and I can't read it over my bookshelf from here. Anyway, that one played more into the fantasy elements as opposed to the necromancy, like bone horror elements. Um, so this one I'm hoping plays more into those horror elements and I think it would be a good balance. Next we have The Fervor by Alma Katsu and this is coming out on April 26th. Uh, this is another historical horror, but it's not a grounded historical horror like I feel like the other one's trying to be. Um, it deals with a mother and daughter being held in a Japanese concentration camp. The book says internment camp, but um, I'm not PC enough to use that term. Anyway, while they're there, there's a mysterious illness that is going through uh, the camp. Uh, People appear sick and then they get violent and they, with the help of a few other people that are also in the camp, attempt to figure out what's going on and it looks like the cause of the illness might have to do with uh, folklore and legends from Japan. Uh, I like this in the fact that it feels like a good mix of history, uh, Japanese mythology and folklore, which I love. Uh, I blame anime for that, but I love Japanese folklore. It's just so bizarrely grim, and it's amazing. Um, and then just like the, the interpersonal element of dealing with the situation and everything that's going on. I think that could be a really good mix. Uh, I'm probably going to buy a physical copy of this because I do feel like I could get rereadability out of it. And next we have The Resting Place by Camilla Sten and translated by Alexandra Fleming, March 29th. Um, this is a non-English novel. Couldn't remember, I can't remember off the top of my head, and I didn't write out what the original language is. Uh, but it basically involves a woman who suffers from uh, un being unable to recognize faces. Um, it's, a, it's a mental thing. Uh, I don't know if it's ever been definitively proven to be an actual illness, um, but the character suffers from it, and that's fine in the work of fiction. And she witnesses the murder of her not-much-loved grandmother, uh, but she can't identify the murderer. Um, at that point, she finds out she's been made the inheritor of a big old house in the Alps. She's going with her boyfriend and her aunt that she doesn't really get along with and the lawyer to look over the property. Um, it's got a grim history. Her grandfather died there under mysterious circumstances. Uh, so yeah, it looks like it could be a great mix of either a ghost story 
or a psychological horror. Either way, I'm down for that. I love both. So, yeah, I'm probably going to add that one. I might add it to my Kindle just because translations don't always go well. Um, so I'll see about that one. I'll see what language it's in and see if I can trudge through it in the original. Uh, if it's Swiss, the answer is no. I barely know enough to ask how to get to a train station. Um, <laughs> but if it's like German or something like that, I could probably trudge through it. Uh, Spanish, same way. But yeah, there's that. All right, I have two more. Um, I stopped looking. Well, I didn't stop looking, but I pretty much uh, cut myself off for June for this. Um, there's that. Uh, I'm currently going on almost 30 minutes uh, raw runtime here. So, uh, but we've got two more on the list. We've got uh, Screams from the Dark, 29 Tales of Monsters and and the monstrous and that's another anthology it's coming out in june um it's got a list of authors and not really many story titles or anything like that so that's more of a just i'm gonna watch it because i love anthologies and i'm gonna see how it goes the last one we have is the path of thorns by ag slater and this is coming out on june 14th this has a lot of gothic horror elements i think it's the only gothic horror thing I've included on this list. Um, I do love those, like, things, like, I mean, the classics, or even the ones that make fun of it a little bit, like Northanger Abbey, like, um, but it's basically the story of a governess that takes a position in a country estate. Everybody seems to love her. Everything's going great, uh, except for the fact that there are all these mysterious things going on in the house. There appears to be monsters in the woods, um, uh, specters, all of that sort of stuff. So that sounds like a good gothic horror novel and I love a good gothic horror novel so yeah I'm going to keep an eye out for that when it comes out in June and I will probably buy it in uh actual physical copy because that's my anniversary month on here that's my birthday month so I'll probably just treat myself by getting it all right and that is my l very very whittled down list um there's a lot of great great novels coming out that I didn't put on here um if you saw one that you really liked and I didn't mention it, go ahead and comment down below. I'll definitely check it out. Uh, like I said, I love horror, so I'm down for pretty much anything as, except for, like, all the blood and guts and stuff with no real plot. Uh, not really my thing. Um, but, yeah, so there you go. Uh, if there was any that you found interesting or that you've already read and want to talk about, go ahead and sound off down below. Uh, you made it this far into my rambling, so why don't you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And a, thumb up, a thumbs up, too. Do it as an accomplishment to yourself, because you made it this far. Uh, I don't think I'm doing any other anticipated novel-type videos. Uh, but if there's something you're interested in, you'd like me to put together a list, uh, let me know and I'll look into it. Uh, horror and science fiction and fantasy are pretty much my go-tos. So those were the ones that I was excited to talk about. But if there's any book or anything else or genre that you're interested in, I'll certainly give it a look. Um, if you do hit that subscriber button, thank you for helping me get one more closer to 100, which is my goal for my anniversary in June. Um, if you want, I have more vlogs over here or I have unboxings. Uh, just put out a new one the other day for Fiction Bath Co. Uh, I love their stuff. Uh, hopefully you'll enjoy watching that. But yeah, that's gonna be it for today and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye! Consider it gets 289 days until Halloween. You think if I started reading a book a day, I might actually get through my TBR? Like, I doubt it. Because I can't finish anything to save my life. Except for erotica. I'm great at finishing those. Okay, that's gonna be it. Bye. <laughs>